Well, I'm back for part two of the tutorial on chords, specifically chord positions. Still looking at a few of the chords I looked at last week, some various shapes, and uh, maybe a little theory, uh, an app I'm going to suggest to you, not an app, actually it's a website, and um, also the dreaded bar chords. So let's review real quick. Last week we looked at E minor. So E minor, the basic E minor chord was right here, second fret, right across. So you've got here, you've got the next fret down and over here. Playing the Pono today, uh, Cedar Mahogany with a high G. Move over to the fourth string, all the strings now, and we have B seventh. Slide down, C sixth. And I told you in, in that video, just, you know, do what I do. I sit on the couch, watch a little TV, and I just strum. And work going back and forth to the point where I, I'm not looking. So you're just working on your muscle memory. At the same time, you could be working on strums. You're strengthening your hand. So all those, all those are good things. Now, when you're in C6, slide down to the fifth fret here. Same shape. You're now in a D. And we talked about D here, here. Open that open string. D here. See how similar it is? Then if you go over to, again towards the floor or the first string, you're on a G minor. And we talked a bit about that, that if you keep your index finger on the A string and slide up, G minor here, listen to it. So just in different chord positions, you can go on this website that I use almost every day. I'm, lo I'm looking up chords, new chords, confirming chord shapes, and it's called ukebuddy.com. Just like it sounds, ukebuddy.com. Hopefully you can see that. Now, the, the great thing about this is if you go to this first hope I can do this. Go to the first square, the, the yellow, and push on that. It's going to give you chord position. So you can sit here and you can look at that and you can go, okay, uh, I want an E and I want a minor and I want to confirm that what Vic is telling me is true and it's going to give you 20 different E minors. And there, right there, is the E minor that we're talking about today. It's great. You just go on there. You can do all kinds of things with this this um, uh, website, ukebuddy.com. I have no affiliation. Just happened to find it one day, and I've been using it ever since. So it'll give you scales, arpeggios. There's a tuner. There's a chord namer. But I use this one a lot to try to figure out different chords and different chord shapes. So one of the other chord shapes for an E minor, we're going to talk primarily about E minor. We're going to talk about G minor and D and just a little bit of theory. Okay, so here we are with our E minor. Now, if you look on this website, you'll see there's a bunch of different ways to do E minor. Another one is to add your finger here. So instead of doing this, you're now fretting your fourth string, your G string, on the same fret as the third string, the fourth fret. So here it is, open, fretted. Now, if you do that, you now have a movable chord because you're all fretted. So you can go up one, to what remember a little bit of theory 
E and then F, B and then C, or B and C and E and F are a half step apart. So there's no E sharp, there's no B sharp, right? So if I'm at E and it's this is a minor, I'm going to go up to the next one and that's F minor. Next one would be F sharp minor. And then lo and behold, if I go up to the fifth fret, I'm to my chord that I was working on last week, slightly different fingering, my G minor. Now, let's just stop for a second and think about, you know, uh, every uke player in the world usually is spending quite a bit of time in the upper three frets, first position, second position, third, sometimes fourth, but in the th first three positions, learning chords, of course. And one of those chords is a D minor. Look at this. Here's your D minor. Open A. Now, one of the things that you're going to learn very quickly as you advance is to finger chords differently. So now you're going to take that D minor and you're going to do it like this. I need this, this index finger because I'm going to slide down everything and now that doesn't sound too good. But now what if I do this? Sure. D sharp minor. Well, lo and behold, if I go up to the next one, it is E minor. You got your D minor shape, you're sliding it up, you're adding a fretted first string on the first fret, and you're just going down. And then all of a sudden, you're in your E minor. And if you go up to the fifth fret, you're in your G minor. What would the next one be? G sharp minor. So, now, Here's the challenge, and here's something I would like you to work on sometime, not necessarily right now. Maybe you already know bar chords. Uh, maybe you've never done a bar chord. They scare you, or you've tried and they sound terrible, you know. Everybody goes through that. Everybody goes through that. So uh, here's what I would like you to do. Go back to your E minor, fretted with all four strings. Just take your index finger and bar it this way. Now, notice where my thumb is right below it. Can you see that? Um, and I don't have it flat or rolled this way. I roll mine a little bit towards the nut because I want this part of my finger, the bony part versus the fatty part, the bony part, to be working on making uh, clear notes. Now, without even doing a chord, here's one thing I highly recommend you do. Just sit down, practice, and do your proper bar chord, thumb, index finger. Don't do a vice grip on this, please. You'll, you'll really hurt your hand. There are tendons in your hand that you can strain. Trust me, I've done it, and it'll set you back. Don't do that. Just get there on the fret, Now see, I'm barely pressing. Now this does have a radius fingerboard and that does help. But you can start like this. Okay, I'm just gonna, a little more pressure. I'm not gonna do a vice grip. I'm not gonna squeeze it as hard as I can. And then all of a sudden, everything's clear. Awesome. So then I have these other three fingers and why not, just, just do this, just do this. Now, one thing I'm not doing is doing a grip all the way down. I am letting up. Let up. So I'm, I'm fingering, if you will. Let up, slide down, pressure, let up, pressure, pressure. Don't keep constant pressure. You will have a very sore and tired hand. Bar chords take a lot of practice, but it will take you to a different level. And part of that actually is some of the things that we're looking at today, right? Because now I can do my E minor like this. Versus like this. If I want to. Now, I personally like, I have spent 
hundreds if not thousands of hours working on bar chords. So I like to do that. On my, um, when I play my baritone, you can play an F like this. I don't, I play it like this. Because now I'm in a very easy, movable chord. I could do it like this, but it bothers my, my hand more that way. I don't know, really know why. Or like this. So, okay, so you've got your E minor now with your all of your strings. You're now movable. Okay, we're going to do, now you've got your G minor, same thing. Now, what about your D? Let's look at that real quick. Here's your D. Now, here's the difference. Your open A string. Now, if you want, you can put your finger down there, in essence, barring that, and you get this. Or you could finger it like this. Whichever is easier for you. For me, personally, I like this. Because these two are next to each other. See that? One, two. So, listen to the difference. Here's your open D on the fifth fret. It's that high, same note. You're adding a D there. Many chords have the two of the same notes, and you go on uke, buddy, you will verify that. So you can do the open. Got your D here. Fifth fret here. Or you can do it like this. Whichever one you would like to do. So practice that and get to the point. I encourage you. If you've only been playing for a few weeks, don't even try bar chords because your hand is all just now strengthened. Your hand's getting tired probably just playing. You probably don't even have that many calluses because it's hard to get calluses with nylon strings. So you're going to form calluses, but you're in. Don't rush. You're not in a rush. Eventually, you're going to want to start working on bar chords. You'll know when that is. And it may just be that you get to a song and you go, oh, I want to play that song, but i got to learn bar chords. You, you will do that. Now you have some chords that you can try those with uh, very simply. So we've got different shape of E minor. We have a different shape of D, different shape of G minor. And you now know where those minors are based on, and that's your D. Now, if you get Uke Buddy, uh, go to the website, you will find that um, tons of different ways to play those different chords. And you also learn a little bit about theory. It gives you all the notes, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, just to sum up, do all that. Work on your bar chords. Got some videos coming down the road. Uh, real quick, I've ordered some more Living Water Strings. I'm going to convert my thin-bodied baritone to GCEA with a low G. I've always done a high G. So I'm going to try that. I like the 20-inch scale uh, because it just gives me more room. Like when I'm down here, it's getting real tight. With a baritone, it's not a problem. I'm going to be doing that. I have a low G C E A also coming for my Kala. So I'm going to be trying the living water strings on that. Also, get rid of the squeak. For some reason, lately, the squeaks would have been bugging me. And I'm going to do a Q&A down the road. So we've got stuff coming down the pike. Also, I ordered a caramel thin body tenor uke from China. It's in the mail. And as soon as I get it, I will do a objective review of a $65 tenor ukulele from China. Until then, keep practicing, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.